Hey guys, so here's something I wanted to try. A three-bladed Odin. So I'm going to apply power to it. I'm going to hold down the set button. And now you're supposed to wait five minutes before it actually does anything. I think it's just twerking. Okay. It's a valid question because, I mean, it, you got it on the normal shekel, right? Yeah. So, and you got the normal grommet in there? Yeah. Yes. It's probably just not used to as much play. The DC motors. Do you want to hold it still and see if that makes a difference? Because the DC motor is trying to learn. All right, can you hold it still? Not really. <laughs> Thing's strong, isn't it? Look at him go. Look at Metal Pete. So the the, the DC motor is not used to that. Uh... Well, that's some air movement. Not used to it. Like, it's, it's, it's in reverse. Yeah. It's going to, um, and it's drawing one, excuse me, zero point... One four amps is what we're drawing over here. So, what happens if you let go? Does it go back to doing the, the Humpty Dance? No. So it was it was just trying to learn, and it couldn't figure itself out. So, my understanding is the DC motor, like if you if you put if you run it without blades, and then you set it to without blades, it's just, that's what it's going to think the load is, and it's going to compensate accordingly. Cause it's kind of got a, I mean, it's kind of got a brain in there. It's like if you ever, you know what a servo motor is? Uh, I've heard of that. Like they're motors that are using robots and stuff like that, and they actually can sense how much torque they need and stuff like that. DC motors and fans are similar to servo motors. They used to be this exact same thing. I don't even know how they're different now. Um, I would have somebody would have to like Tom would have to explain that to me. So, but yeah, it's um. I didn't realize this, but I guess this would have been a good reason to, to use like a ball socket bracket or something where it's not going to swivel at all. In which that's what it comes. From. Right. I didn't. I didn't realize that it. Uh... So it's learning, and then we're, it's going to have to relearn with all nine blades. I for some reason thought these had eight blades. I never actually bothered to count. <laughs> oh man. Fan V Metal Feet. <laughs> oh. Who shall be victorious? Strong, isn't it? Yeah. DC, uh, DC Yeah, see, all, all that is is the grommet just going back and forth up there. It's not like the fan's not going to fall or anything like that. But it's, uh, let me see. So, what we need to do is get a vice grips on here. The uh, biggest fan we've tested up here so far, I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Other than putting the cages on. I think this is still bigger than that, because that fit between the lights. True, oh yeah. This uh, drops below the lights. In fact, I spaced those lights so that a 60-inch fan could comfortably go between them. But I didn't account for 72-inch fans, cages, or 84-inch fans, as I believe the Odin is an 84-inch fan. Oh. So... See, 72 is 6 feet. Yeah. So it's a 7 foot fan. It is uh, taller than I am if you put it on its side. Mm -hmm. It's drawing 0 0.18 amps, by the way. And I don't know about you, but I'm getting some crazy airflow from it. You want to go to the airflow point and see? Sure. I don't even know what speed this would be considered to be. We'll find out in a second. Airflow. How does it compare to like a K55 fan? I think it's reaching K55 right now. 
Was feeling K55. <laughs> but not gold line? No. no okay. Not gold line. I mean, one thing to consider is it's designed for nine blades. And so yeah. uh, it's not, I mean, granted, if it were the type of fan that would spin. Okay, so now it's done with, it literally did take five minutes and 18 seconds to do the learning process. So the manual saying that it takes five minutes was not kidding. We're gonna put the LED light on it, and we'll do up to the other other uh, six other six blades on it. So here's speed one. Draws point zero two on speed one. Although it's still uh, figuring out, I guess it's trying to figure its life out. Does it just not know what to do with that mount? I mean, I never would have thought of a J-hook as having that much play in it with a grommet, but... Well, when it sees that it's in a ball socket, it knows. I guess so. I'm going to hit high, and then if, that, if, if, it, if it still is acting like this, then maybe we'll take it down and we'll do the next video with a ball socket. Okay. So here's high. I hit high. I didn't reverse it either. I just hit high. So I don't know what it's thinking. I'm gonna hit stop. Okay, that's stop. I'm gonna hit high. I think the poor thing just doesn't know what to do because it's not, but it can't be the first time that one's been mounted on a, okay, so I'm going to hit reverse and see what it does. Okay, well, it did something, and we're up to... Okay, let's stop it, and let's try uh, uh, Let's try it on a ball socket map. Yeah. Okay, so we will continue this video in a bit.